Hi, my name is Eliza Lawrence, and during the summer of 2021, I looked at how people's intentions to receive a hypothetical vaccine varies when presented with numeric versus non-numeric side effect information. Today, I will be presenting about the paper, Excluding Numeric Side Effect Information Produces Lower Vaccine Intentions, which is currently under review in the journal Vaccine. During the COVID-19 pandemic, 23% of eligible Americans remained unvaccinated nine months after the vaccine rollout. This hesitancy is a public health crisis and can be contributed to multiple factors, including complacency about the risks posed by disease, negative attitudes toward va towards vaccines, and the risk of vac vaccination versus disease infection. Today, vaccine side effects are communicated in a qualitative manner, meaning when you go to the doctor or look on the CDC's website, you'll see a list of possible side effects you may experience after receiving a vaccine, but we'll have no idea what percentage of people experience each side effect. Research by Peters et al. in 2014 concluded that presenting adverse side effect information for prescription drugs with numeric likelihoods reduces risk overestimation and increases willingness to take a prescribed medication in comparison to presenting a list by itself or with verbal labels. The purpose of my project was to determine whether a similar pattern would exist for vaccines. That is, whether presenting side effect information numerically would result in a greater willingness to receive a vaccine in comparison to presenting only non-numeric side effect information, and that this communication method would increase risk comprehension for vaccines. To answer this, we conducted an online survey using a cohort of previously screened Amazon Mechanical Turk participants who had answered questions to determine their level of vaccine hesitancy. The survey group had 595 participants, 44% of which were female, and 75% of which were non-Hispanic white. The mean age of the group was 40.9 uh, years old. In the survey, all participants were told, you have been recommended to receive vaccine A to protect you against disease A. This disease is infectious and caused by a virus. It can be passed from person to person. This disease can cause complications, including a runny nose, red eyes, fever, wheezing, skin rash, and extreme fatigue. Then participants were randomly assigned to one of four conditions. In each condition, the participants saw varying amounts of information regarding vaccine side effect information. The first condition only included the list of side effects, the right column in the table included on the screen. This almost exactly resembles how the CDC website presents COVID-19 side effect information. The second condition had the list of side effects and the corresponding likelihood as a risk label. The risk labels were based on European Union labeling standards. For example, anything that has a likelihood of 10% to 100% is labeled as very common, and anything greater than 1% to 10% is labeled as common. The third condition included the list of side effects and the percentage of people who experienced the side effect. The fourth condition appeared just as the table seen on the slide does, with the list of side effects, the percentage of people who experience it, and the corresponding risk label. The list of side effects and likelihoods of the vaccine were based on the first dose of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, but in our study, the disease remained unnamed. We also included a low likelihood, very serious side effect called thrombocytopenia syndrome, which has been recorded in response to the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. Participants in all four conditions were then asked about their intentions to receive the vaccine, the reason for their choice, and estimates of the numeric likelihoods for three provided side effects. We measured vaccine intentions on a six-point scale with the question, if the vaccine were available, how likely is it that you would receive it? We measured the reasons for intention decisions with a multiple choice question with seven possible answers. Answer options included that most of the side effects are not very serious and the possibility of very serious blood clotting. Risk overestimation was measured by participants estimating the likelihood as a percentage of three side effects. They were injection site pain with 71% likelihood, fever with 4%, and blood clotting with 0.0001%. These responses were coded for overestimation. Finally, we measured vaccine hesitancy in the baseline survey by asking, in thinking about a new vaccine that your doctor recommends for you, what are your thoughts about getting it? There were four answer options, and after separating responses, we were left with a binary measure of 64% being willing and 36% being hesitant to receiving a vaccine. 
Our data analysis strategy included conducting ANOVAs with estimated marginal means on vaccine intentions, risk overestimation, and participants' most important reason for selection and overestimation. We also found a three-way interaction of intentions between numeric information, verbal label, and vaccine uncertainty. Our first finding was that including numeric side effect information increased vaccine intentions. Via logistic regression, we found that 70% of those who received numeric information were predicted to be moderately to extremely likely to vaccinate, compared to only 54% of those who did not receive numeric information. Second, providing numeric side effect information decreased risk overestimation. Participants without numeric information overestimated an average 2.5 out of three risks, whereas those with numeric information overestimated one out of the same three risks. In the case of very rare serious side effects, this overestimation was ubiquitous. 98% of our sample not given numeric information overestimated the risk of serious blood clots versus 32% 30 who were given numeric information. Unexpectedly, risk overestimation was highest in the condition with a verbal label and no numeric information, rather than the condition with no verbal label and only the list of side effects. We also completed two exploratory uh, analyses on vaccine hesitancy among the willing versus hesitant and analyzed what were participants' reasons for taking or refusing the vaccine. We found through a three-way interaction that the vaccine hesitant were most likely to get the vaccine when given both percentages and verbal labels. Among the vaccine hesitant, 43% were predicted to be moderately or extremely likely to get the vaccine when provided numeric information and verbal labels, compared to only 24% in the list-only group. Finally, we compared two answer options for participants' willingness to take the vaccine. These were most side effects are not serious and very serious blood clotting. Only 36% of those in the list-only condition indicated that most side effects were not serious compared to 61% in the verbal label plus numeric likelihood condition. Only 2% of participants in the numeric conditions selected serious blood clotting as the most important reason for their choice compared to 11% in the non-numeric conditions. Therefore, the presence of verbal labels mattered in the numeric condition, but not in the non-numeric condition. Our sample, there are a few limitations for our research. First, our sample was more highly educated and more numerate than the general population. Second, our label and numeric condition was significantly younger than the other conditions. As older age related to greater, greater vaccine intentions, it's unlikely that this actually, that the higher intentions in the label and numeric condition is explained by the younger average age. We also used a hypothetical vaccine and future research would ideally occur within, the, within public health departments to determine whether numeric information increases real world vaccine uptake. Finally, um, the last limitation was that our sample included more individuals, 64%, who were already in favor of vaccination than hesitant. From our research, we were able to conclude that providing numeric information such as percentages of people with side effects increased vaccine intentions. People overwhelmingly overestimated side effect likelihood without percentages, and the combination of percentages and verbal labels increased intentions for vaccine hesitant for example, politically conservative or those who reported uh, uncertainty about vaccination in general to vaccinate. In conclusion, our research demonstrates that the standard practice of not providing numeric information about side effect likelihood may lead to a less informed public who is less likely to vaccinate, potentially causing massive public health consequences and delaying our ability to fight disease. I'd like to thank the Center for Undergraduate Research for providing this uh, providing funding for this project through a first year research experience grant. I'd also like to thank Dr. Ellen Peters and Dr. Schutz Reinhardt and the other members of the KD Lab for their mentorship and feedback through this project.